Hi, um, I'm Jane Scott. I'm with uh, Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, and I'm the Director of Research, Training, and Career Development. Um, I, we, it, what I'm trying to do and what we've been trying to do for a number of years is to explain what NIH can provide to emergency medicine research. Um, it, when I first started this, uh, you know, why NIH? People frequently didn't understand the scope and magnitude of the budgets for research that you can, you can get. Um, it's got 27 institutes, it's three uh, institutes and centers, uh, $31 billion every year for research training. Um, and with the research monies, you have protected time for research, which is critical, and you have the money to hire uh, personnel and to conduct uh, clinical studies, rigorous studies. Um, and those are all key points to getting NIH funds. In order to be competitive at NIH, it takes roughly five to eight years of training, um, and it's generally through a combination of awards, um, NIH-funded training awards. Um, and there are institutional awards, which include the T32, the K12, the KL2. The KL2 is through your CTSA, um, and we'll talk about the others in a minute. Uh, and then there are individual awards, so people generally do an institutional training award and then they move on to an um, individual award. The institutional awards are nice because the PI writes them and then they select the trainees, so the, the person who's getting onto a T32 or a K-12 doesn't have to write a whole application, they just have to um, inform the, or impress the program director. Hi, welcome on board. Come on in. <laughs> um, so this is sort of a basic, um, my assumption for getting started in, in uh, NIH. Um, and I think my take-home message is what's missing from emergency medicine research. It is an NIH-funded research pipeline. Um, historically, um, okay. So by comparison, and I'm going to use cardiology as a comparison just because I hang out with those guys too. Um, in my portfolio of grants, I've got roughly 40 T32 programs that are dedicated to cardiology. And they are clinical, they're cardiology fellowship programs. They go in for one to two years of clinical training and then two to three years of research training. The research training is paid for by a T32 grant that they compete for, um, sometimes, but they call it a cardiology fellowship, so the T32 is very frequently dropped from the actual language of what they explain. Um, some of the programs in my portfolio have been up and running for 44 years, huge amount of time. 40 programs, 44 years, that's a lot of research training to a lot of cardiologists over a long period of time. Um, when we um, turn it around and go, and, and NIH as a whole uh, is basically $2,500 uh, or 2,500 programs uh, annually. What do the programs provide? Tuition, stipend, and support for the person. So it pays for the training expenses. And which is nice, and then you get a tuition, or excuse me, a pot of money per trainee, and at the postdoctoral level, it's about $10,000 to defray the cost of training. Um, so, 40 in cardiology, 2,500, and I think uh, before the K-12 program, there was one emergency medicine program that was a T32, and it was in pediatrics. So there has been, a, it, this has been a missing piece in terms of the emergency medicine background. And I, you know, um, what you guys don't know is in a, I started off in the ER as an ER nurse way back, a million years ago. So I've seen the entire field um, sort of transition. In the early 80s to the early 2000s, you guys spent a lot of time, energy, and effort in um, securing your independence as a specialty. Um, most of the efforts went there. The, not a lot of, not a lot of um, effort went into research. 
there were emergency care researchers in the 1980s and 1990s, but they came mostly out of um, cardiology. If you look at the um, Mickey Eisenberg and Richard Cummins, all out of University of Washington, and those dynamic programs that were up and running in the 90s, they were all cardiologists. Um, so, we, so emergency medicine hasn't gone after these T32s. Uh, and started to feel a pinch. They didn't have, you know, they, as the collective, the ASAP and SAEM um, joined forces and in 2005 went to the NIH director and said, we need this. And it left, it led to a, a, a series of events including, excuse me, um, ah, Dr. Klein. It, so it led to a series of events, including um, that there were then workshops, there were articles, there were a lot of uh, activities pertaining to emergency care research. Dr. Klein, come on up. No, no problem. Um, anyway, to make a long story short, uh, from 2005 to 2009, roundtables and publications. In 2013, Jeremy Brown's Office of Emergency Care Research at NIH was created. So NIH is finally, uh, or emergency medicine is finally at NIH. Um, in 2011, I had been part of the trans-NIH working group on this stuff, as well as a lot of other people across NIH and NHLBI, Heart, Lung, and Blood was particularly interested in in saying, we need to help out, we need to do something. So we, we went ahead and wrote up, a, you know, it's an initiative, it's a one-time offering to create a program to train people in emergency care research. It was an institutional training award. It was funded in, it was rolled out in 2011. The first awards went out in 2012. We funded six centers across the United States, Penn, Pitt, Vanderbilt, uh, UC Davis, um, Oregon Health and Sciences Center, and New York, uh, and Mount Sinai Hospital, Icon School of Medicine. So six programs. Um, and it was $21 million, and everybody was in for two or three years. The metrics of success is, did you ultimately get to a, um, an individual K award? or did you get to an R award? So really, really, really pushed from day one that they came into the program. In the first program, we ended up with a total of 43 scholars completing the program. Um, more than 60% have already obtained their individual K award, which is pretty phenomenal. Um, and um, and we just ended in 2017, so there should be some people in that uh, original cohort that will be getting additional awards. Um, we have a second program that Jeremy Brown helped us get up and running, and this is a trans NIH program in emergency care research. Again, NHLBI is funding part of it, um, and then we have partners with NIMH and um, the National Institute for Nursing Research. This time we have four partners, uh, Indiana, Dr. Klein is running one of the programs, and Dr. Storo in the room is running one of the other programs. I think my point here is, though, that K-12 programs are temporary. Uh, NIH uses them as temporary bridges. You create a bolus of investigators <coughs> in a specific domain, and then it goes away. Why? Because there are other new domains that need to be funded. So these are not, these are, they appear, they disappear. They appear, they disappear. We've had two programs, and I, I can't even begin to imagine that we'll have a third. With that said, I've been trying, we've been pushing and talking about T32 programs with um, the research community. Um, two of the original six um, K-12 programs have now, Pittsburgh and Mount Sinai, have now successfully competed for T32 programs, and so they have emergency care research programs that are f two to three years in length with the goal of getting people to the K and the R awards. 
and whoops, that's about it. And so my bottom line is T32 is uh, where we need to be going. K-12s are wonderful, they're great, but that kind of funding doesn't exist, and, and it's really iffy. Okay, thank you.